everyone, and welcome to today's Steris Tech Talk on using uncertainty in radiation processing to establish process target dose. Steris Tech Talks are a series of webinars covering subjects relating to gas and radiation sterilization processing and the laboratory testing and validation services which support these processes. My name is Ashley Maru, and I'm the Associate Product Manager for Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies. I'll be the host for today's event. Our presenter today is Deepak Patil. Deepak is the Senior Director of Radiation Technology at Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies. Deepak joined Steris AST in 2000 as a dosimetry analyst with the Dosimetry Services Group. He has subsequently held positions of increasing responsibility throughout his 20 plus years and led the transition from an internally focused gamma dosimetry support team to a customer focused radiation technology neutral organization. Over the past several years, Deepak has assumed the leadership role for our radiation physics team, radiation technology center, radiation tech team, and most recently the Libertyville laboratory. Deepak is a recognized industry leader serving as an executive committee member on the ASTM E-61 Radiation Processing Committee. He is also a member of Amy and Kerms. All attendees are on mute for the presentation. However, we would like to encourage everyone to submit questions using the questions function on the GoToWebinar control panel. Questions will be answered following the presentation. Today's presentation will be recorded and uploaded to our Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies YouTube channel. Please note that continuing education credits are not provided as part of this webinar. And now over to Deepak to begin the presentation. Thank you, Ashley. Um, as Ashley mentioned, I'm Deepak Patil, the Senior Director of Radiation Technology, <coughs> excuse me, at Steris AST. So, um, I'm partnering this presentation with uh, my colleague, Hervé uh, Michel, who's based in Europe. He had a, a tech talk this morning he completed. So the agenda for today's tech talk is that we will go through some general concepts of uncertainty, target dose and process variation. We'll also discuss the sources or components of uncertainty. We'll look at what is tar process target dose and how to set process target dose. And finally, we'll look at output to the process. So what is uncertainty? Uncertainty is a parameter associated with the result of a measurement that characterizes the dispersion of values that could reasonably be attributed to the measurement. This is a definition from the JC GUM document and also is, is repeated in ISO TS 11137 part four. So we can also define uncertainty as the following. The measure of possible error in the estimated value of the measure end as provided by the result of the measurement. It's an, and it's an estimate characterizing the range of values with the true value of the measure end lies. <clears throat> an important concept to keep in mind is that measurement is the best estimate of dose. Users should not correct measurements for measurement uncertainty, which is stated in 11137 part three, 2017. And finally, process variability is a measure of the factors that result on in random distribution of data around the average that provides information on how well the process can perform when all special cause variation is removed. So what do we mean by special cause variation? Special cause variation is variation that's unpredictable or outside our, our historical experience base. Look at product dose specifications. So product dose specification is the range of acceptable dose that can be delivered to a product, which is established during dose setting validation. The end result is the sterilization or minimum and maximum acceptable dose. Next, we'll look at coverage factors. Coverage factors, which can all, this is also represented by the value, the Num, uh, sorry, the letter K is representing the level of confidence that's required or selected for the process. For example, K equals two is a 95% confidence level. It can also be expressed as two standard deviations. And process target or detarget dose at a specified is a dose at a specified monitoring location, which the irradiation process parameters are set to deliver. So. The dose measured from routine processing or the monitoring dose is used to determine whether or not the process specifications have been met. There's two methods that we can go about doing this. One is interpretation of dose measurements from direct or indirect measurement of dose delivered to the product. The second is a interpretation of dose measurements to monitor that a process is in a state of control. So indirect measurement means use of what we sometimes call a reference location 
which has an established correlation to the minimum and maximum dose within the product load. The PQ mapping determines this relationship. The calculated doses for indirect measurement have uncertainties associated with the dose at the monitoring location, as well as the uncertainty associated with the dose at the maximum or minimum locations and associated ratios, plus any other applicable components of uncertainty. A combination of these components can be used to determine the maximum minimum dose targets for the routine monitoring dose. For process monitoring, process monitoring is just as it sounds. It's basically using dose symmetry at locations on the, not on the product to monitor the process. In this situation, the variability associated with the measurement of minimum and maximum doses from PQ combined with other relative components of uncertainty can be used to determine minimum and maximum dose targets for the routine monitoring. And finally, direct measure means placing dose centers throughout the product load at minimum and maximum dose locations, which are determined during PQ mapping. It can be also used as an in indicator that the process is in a state of control. So in radi radiation processing, we have a process input, which is really the dose specification and the dimension specification, meaning you know we want to make sure that the, the state, the validated state remains after the PQ. So the box sizes aren't changing and things like that from the way we uh, validated during PQ mapping. We have a process requirement, which is the target dose. And then we have a process output. Sometimes we call that maybe the certificate of processing. Uh, this is the measurement measure dose, and the measure dose has an uncertainty associated with it. So what are some of these sources of uncertainty? Um, well, this is a figure two taken from 11137 part four. And so, you know, the takeaway here is that process variation, which is sigma process you see in the top, is comprised of both measurement uncertainty, which is an output uncertainty, and process variability, which is determined from assessments completed to establish the routine process and our routine process input. So there's quite a few sources here. Um, so the, the, the main point here is it's not only measurement uncertainty that you have to consider when setting your process up. Uh, this is kind of a busy slide, but uh, and you know basically this is com components of uncertainty for a dosimetry system. We have a uncertainty associated with the lab calibration curve um, with the there's two methods to do a calibration. We call it method one sometimes. This is using an approved calibration laboratory. This involves measuring dosimeters irradiated to a dose certified by an approved calibration lab, for example, NIST or NPL. And method two is an in situ calibration, which uses transfer standard dosimeters that are provided and measured by an approved laboratory. So as we go down here, we also have reproducibility, excuse me, reproducibility of the batch measurement as an uncertainty component, uncertainty associated with the curve fit, Uncertainty associated with the transfer or transfer standard or calibration dosimeter. Uncertainty associated with the radiation temperature. And the, way, the reason this says it, if applicable, is because in a lab calibration, that temperature is usually controlled. And uncertainty associated with the verification exercise. If you're doing so, verification exercise would be the method two. Uh, uh, so that's why it says if applicable. And then finally, it's uncertainty associated with the difference between equipment, if applicable. So this is really looking at measurement instrumentation if you're maybe using calibration uh, from two different instruments. Um, there's variation associated with the measurements on that instrument. So the equation below looks a little scary, but basically it's just combining all of those values and, and squaring the sum of squares and then taking the square root of that. And that's how you end up with your uncertainty value for dosimetry system uncertainty. Um, so this is just, a, we take a look at the input and steps in establishing a process target dose. The radiation process is monitored, monitored using processing parameters and dosimeter measurements. Three process targets at the routine monitoring position can be defined. A lower target dose, an upper target dose, and a corresponding dose target, respectively, to the lower and upper set limits for the process target dose and actual process target dose chosen for routine processing conditions. There are a number of factors used in determining the range of process target doses. These inputs in establishing the process target are listed in uh, listed in following sections and depicted in figure one. Figure one is, it's not labeled here, but this is figure one on the slide. So just to kind of recap that process variation and, and measurement certainty are both used to set the target dose and not analyze the process output. So it's an input as opposed to an output. The output's the measured dose. So setting the process target dose 
So we have separate determinations of process variation or sigma process, as you mentioned earlier, that are used to calculate the process target dose upper and lower pro process target dose and are used to establish the range of process target doses. The combination of these inputs is used to calculate a range of process doses at the routine monitoring location. Um, we have the lowest process target dose that will achieve a minimum dose that will be equal to or greater than, than the sterilization or minimum dose that's required at a defined level of confidence. We talked about that earlier at K equals two. Most processes are set at K equals two or 95%. The highest process target dose that will achieve a maximum dose to product equal to or less than the maximum dose at the defined level of confidence. So basically you're looking at minimum dose plus a certain percentage and maximum dose minus a certain percentage, and that becomes your target dose. This is just a graphical representation of what we talked about. Um, you know, the target dose, as I mentioned, takes into account the minimum dose, the monitoring dose, and the maximum dose, and they all have a variation associated with them, which all need to be taken into account when setting your process targets. As I mentioned earlier, uh, a coverage factor or K is selected, which represents a level of confidence or uh, selected for the process. The coverage factor is usually K equals two, as I mentioned, which is a 95% confidence level for a two-sided Gaussian distribution or 97.5% for one-sided. And if we look at the example below, we can see if you're processing at a lower target, which was established with K equals two, there's 2.5% risk or chance that the minimum dose might fall below the sterilization dose. That's if you targeted the exact dose that is required for sterilization. So if you had a 25 kilograde target uh, product specification and you targeted 25 kilograde, there's a chance that you will, 2.5% chance that you will fall below that level. Um, this is just some examples. Uh, so just, I'm gonna run through a couple slides here. So. In this example, we can see that with one run, you require, if you're doing one PQ run, you require a fixed variation because um, it has to be, it's up based on a single value. As you complete more runs, so in the middle here, we see three runs and our capability goes um, at 7.9% and 3.7%. So now we've added some variation to the process that we can use to take into account when we set our process. And if we add even more runs, we see that the process becomes capable at six runs as that variation is reduced to 5.4 and 2.4% respectively in this, uh, in this example. So the takeaway here, the more runs that you add, you have a potential to reduce the variation. So in this example, we look at the customer dose specification of 25 to 50 kilogray. Um, that should say DUR equals 2.0. So again, as we add additional runs, we can see the target dose widens. And when we do one run only, you know, when you run through the map on, on the PQ, which is in the, in the yellow cells is what the result of the PQ is. We see that the target dose is basically at the monitoring location is 33.2 to 33.7, which is a range of only 0 0.5 kilogram. As we add more runs to the assessment, so now in the middle, we see we have three PQ runs here. And you can see that the uh, variation is 4.9 to 4.6%. That target dose widens to 32.5 to 36.4%, which gives you a range of 3.9 kilogram and represents a potential gain in through, through, throughput of 2.1%. And we add one more run to that. We widen the target even more to 31.8 to 30.37.0, which is a 5.2 kilogram range. And we see about a 4.5% gain in throughput. This could also allow for adding products to and creating existing, sorry, creating a processing category, or you can add product to an existing product processing category. So, um, you know, it, it just winds that that range, so you're able to assess whether or not existing PQs would fall into a what traditionally maybe was called a family, but currently we call a processing category. And then this is just an example of the process output. Uh, the chart on the left shows the product dose specification and variation associated with the minimum, uh, the D-min, the D-mon, which is the monitoring dose, minimum dose and the maximum dose. And the chart on the right shows the Gaussian distribution associated with the monitoring dose and the associated variation that comes along with that is the Gaussian distribution. 
So finally, uh, just to conclude, um, this spreadsheet was built off of 11137 Part 4, Appendix A, I think it is, uh, which was published in June of 2020. So we can see here we have a process input, which in this case is, a, is the customer dose range of 18.8 to 50. And then we put all our PQ results in the tables. And then we have a process uh, variation associated with that. So in this example, we see um, in this example, we see there's a calibration uncertainty, um, there's a machine variability, and then that is all tied together. That This information you can see, for example, we use the dose mapping variation at the minimum, which comes from the CV percent here, and we also use the dose mapping maximum, which comes from the CV percent here. This table ties that information together through the calculation we showed earlier on the square of the um, the square root of squares and the individual components. And then we can see we end up with a monitoring location target dose. And these values one, two, and three are the different coverage factors. So usually we, as I mentioned earlier, we use a coverage factor of two. And then finally, we go to a routine process which tells us to make the dose of 18.8 to 50 kilogray, the monitoring dosimeter would need to have 20.1 to 37.1 kilogram delivered, which results in a process that's in specification. Uh, thanks again for joining us today, and this concludes the webinar.